Hello and welcome to High School Football on WOSN. Alongside Darden Evergall, I'm Evan Skilleter, and tonight it's a WBL showdown between the Kenton Wildcats and the Salina Bulldogs. Dar, excited to be here. Two teams, one and two, off to relatively slow starts, but one of these teams is going to be 500 after today, and it's uh, it's a big one in terms of momentum going forward. Oh, it certainly is. And both, like I said, both teams one and two, one and one in the WBL, getting off to a rocky start. Like I said, you know, averaging both of them around 10 or 12 points a game, but giving up 28, 29 points a game as well between the two of them. So, you know. We're look at look at some keys right off the bat. Let's look at Salina, you know, the visiting team here tonight. You know, they they need to run the football and they need to run it effectively. They need to establish that right off the bat. They also want to prevent the big play, and that's the deep ball that King's able to throw. You know, you got to get back there and cover those up and not let them go for big scores and big gains. And the last thing is prevent big returns. Now, Kitten's got a couple guys on, the, on that return team that can really churn out some yardage. So you got to contain those guys and keep them on their side of the field. Don't let them get down there into, into your territory right off the bat. The second thing we want to look at is Kenton. And, you know, Kenton, as we said, coming in one and two. You know, they didn't want to dictate the tempo of this game right off the bat, too. They want, they want to establish themselves, you know, not let Salina take the, take the bull by the horns. They want to be the guys to set the tempo. They want to be aggressive and be the aggressor out there and, and really go after the Bulldogs and just, you know, hammer them as much as they can, you know, get the big plays that they want. And the last thing is be efficient in the passing game. And we've always known that Kenton's a passing team. They always have been, always probably will be, you know. Uh, and so they want to establish that right off the bat. If they can do that and counteract the Salina Bulldogs rushing game, you know, this is going to be a very interesting game. It may come down to one big play tonight that's going to move, win this ball game. Thank you so much, Dar. We will step aside. Kickoff coming up on the other side of the break right here on WOSN. Today's scoreboard sponsor is Wabash Mutual Telephone, a proud supporter of Mercer County Athletics. Back to Kenton High School. We are just about ready for kickoff as Salina wearing the white uniforms with the gray and green trim will be kicking left to right on your screen. Kenton will return wearing the red uniforms. Back to return for Kenton, Tim Wilkinson and Grady Clayman Beasley. This one kicked off to the right side and it will be returned by Wilkinson. Wilkinson looking for some space and a nice return there as he crosses the 35 yard line. And out comes the Kenton offense, a pass-heavy offense, as you mentioned, Don. Yeah, absolutely. And you're talking about Wilkerson right there. He's our big running back as well on their offense. But, you know, he averaged about 21 yards on the returns. You just saw what he can do right there. And he picked that one out of the air like he was an outfielder out there. You know, so good start on offense for uh, Kenton. Good field position to get him off and going. Let's see what they do on this passing game that they really have to establish. Kenton led by quarterback Corbin Johnston, the 6'1 sophomore. Johnston looking to pass early. He completes that to Wilkinson. So far this season, Johnston, 51 of 78 for 581 yards, two touchdowns, one interception. The team that has thrown more passes than they have run the football. A little bit of a hurry up offense for Kenton as well. Pass it quickly out to the left once again. This time it's caught by Tyson Lawrence. And Lawrence has enough for the home savings and load of Kenton first down. Uh, I'll tell you what, that's what the Wildcats want to do. They want to get off this passing game right now. And that kind of sets up Wilkerson, who's the running back. If they can get, you know, kind of spread the field a little bit, that gives him a little bit more opportunity to get those yardage he needs to get. First down for Kenton, two, excuse me, three wide receivers split out to the right side. That's Wilkinson lined up on the right of Johnston. They'll run this one. Left side, Wilkinson picks up a couple on first down. Wilkinson, a tough runner. I mean, only a junior, 5'11", 180 pounds. Boy, he's got some solid legs on him as well. Looks like we have an injured bulldog on the field. 11-16 on the clock, and with that, we'll step aside as well. You're watching High School Football on WOSN.
Home Savings and Loan of Kenton is committed to serving our community since 1888. Offering infinite opportunities and service you can count on. Home Savings and Loan, member FDIC, equal housing lender. Welcome back to Kenton High School. The injured player up and off the field. It was Tucker Ackley, a linebacker for Salina. Play continues here with a second down and six for Kenton. Now they got him spread three to the one side and one to the other side. Wilkinson moving to the left side. Johnston looking to pass. He's going to go deep down the right. And that one is incomplete. Good coverage downfield there by the defensive backfield of Salina. And I believe it was Caleb Gaves that got a hand on it. Yeah, Caleb, Caleb Gaves has three interceptions already this season. So he's not a guy you really want to throw towards. But good double coverage there on that uh, receiver for Salina. So now a third down and six. Ball just across midfield as Johnston rolls to his right. Picks up a nice block, sends the pass out right, and that one is incomplete. Referee said Lawrence was out of bounds. That was number nine on coverage of three. Landon Ackley. Yeah, Landon Ackley with the defense. Tyson Lawrence with the attempted grab. He thought he was in bounds, but either way, a fourth down. And six coming up, and Kenton looks like they will punt this one away. That'll be Tyson Lawrence doing the punting, averaging about 28.9 yards per punt. Braylon Gaves back to receive this punt. Snap is low. Good job recovering it. It's a short punt, takes a hop. And a Kenton bounce down to the 13 yard line. So ends up being a pretty nice kick yeah, for Kenton. Good roll on that one right there. Good coverage by the Ken Wildcats too on that punt. So they didn't get a return on that one. So that brings out the Salina offense, so led by quarterback Nick Adams. Adams, a six foot, 150 pound senior, has completed 28 of 53 attempts this season for 263 yards, a touchdown, and four interceptions. Adams starts in the shotgun, his running back lined up next to him. I believe that's Gavin Brown. They'll look to pass quickly out to the left side and almost intercepted. The ball hits the ground and incomplete. It was intended for Nathan Rammel. Like Jaron Baker out there on the coverage for Kenton. And Jaron, a junior, 6'1, 165 pounds. Pardon me, that's Xander Jones in the backfield, it looks like. And Jones is going to get the carry to the left side. Jones trying to find the edge. Picks up a couple, but a nice job by the right side of that Kenton defense. Certainly was. And, it, yeah, we talked about, you know, Slime trying to establish the run. You know, Sandra, Sandra Jones has three touchdowns this year on the ground. But, you know, they're averaging about 80 yards per game, I mean, rushing. So, yeah, they really need to establish that run because, to set up Nick Adams because he's hitting about 53% of his passes. But, you know, you gotta you gotta spread this Kenton offense or defense out a little bit. Let these guys run the ball. Spread formation, two wide receivers split out either direction. Adams looking left, still looking, throws, and the comeback route. I think he might have had enough for first down. Yeah, yeah, it's right near that marker, and it is enough for the HSLC of Kenton, first down. Nice job by the receiver. Went down just as far as he had to go. Turned around, knew where the first down marker was. You know, made that stop. Caught the ball, and of course he was forced back across. But, you know, he had enough for the first down then. Ball up to the 24-yard line, left hash. This time the runner lined up right behind Adams. Keep this one on the ground. It's Jones again. Jones up the middle this time. And he picks up about four yards. Not a bad carry on first down. No, this is a good drive for Salina right now. You know, just keep the chains moving. You know, get four or five yards on, a, on first down. You do give him five. five. So yeah. that'll be second down five. So yeah, it, I will just establish this a little bit. Need some time off the clock. You know, take control of the game early. Wide 
receivers on either side this time. And goes in motion. They'll keep this on the ground with Jones again. This time, Jones with a big pickup. And eventually brought down by the safety of Kenton, but he crosses midfield and has another HSLC of Kenton first down. Oh, good blocking up front. And I mean, they opened a big hole for him to get through, and then he got past the linebacker and had a wide open space over there before Carter Haydinger brought him down for Kenton. All the way up to the Wildcat 49-yard line. You know, they said, that, you know, in the, in the keys of the game, we said they want to establish the run game, and that's what they're doing right now. But a couple of nice passes mixed in there. That, you know, they can keep a good balance between the two. They'll run this on the right side. Jones cuts back in, and Jones has another good pickup. Four-yard pickup up to the 45. Run game working so far for Salina early on. As you said, both teams one and two. One and one in the Western Buckeye League. I'll tell you what, there's a big difference between two and two and one and three. Yeah, there certainly is. Especially in the WBL because, you know, they get a lot of good teams in the Western Buckeye League. Adams on the comeback route, no good. The receiver slipped, but the pass was pretty low anyway. Braylon Gabe's the intended target. Third down, seven. Really, third and six, actually. Yeah, you think it'd be a passing play, but I'll tell you what, you can't count Xander Jones out. I mean, that young man, you know, he gets a little bit of a hole up there. And that, that offensive line's doing a nice job of blocking for him, too. Kept running with three down linemen, four, uh, four linebackers. So far, there's been a lot of space, as Dar said, for Jones to pick up yards on the ground. This time, it'll be Landon Ackley. As Ackley cuts Look out field, and he's got a nice pickup. Another HLC, HSLC of Kenton first down. Yeah, that leaves a lot of room. When you've got three down linemen for, on defense like Kenton's running right now, you got four line, linebackers, true. But you know, once that guy gets past that line, he's got a lot of open field out there. You need a lot of speed on your linebackers if you're going to just cut that off and get, you know, keep him from getting big gains like that. Absolutely. Ball up to the 34-yard line. Two runners in the backfield this time. Got Gavin Brown to the right. They're going to keep this on the ground with Jones. And again, chipping away. Another nice pickup. Gets about five. And why not just stick with the, the run game? Yeah, stick with the run game. You're eating up a lot of time off that clock. You know, for when you when you giving up to, you know 28, 29 points a game, you know you want to keep possession as long as you can. End up getting some points at the end of it, of course. But you know you want to eat up a lot of time. You want to keep the other team's offense off the field, especially when you got an offense like Kansas that likes to throw the ball as much. They stay with two runners in the backfield. It's Jones on the left and Gavin Brown on the right. Pass this one, it's complete. Another nice play as Adam Faber catches that one for Salina. He's just shy of the first down, so a third and one coming up. Yeah, Faber did a nice job. A lot of times you see that on that, uh, that type of play where the defensive back sees the ball come and goes for it. And then the, other, the receiver all he has to do is just step around him and then gain that couple more yards on it. You can't, can't fault the, the defensive back because he's doing what he's supposed to do as far as trying to go for that ball, but you know, it happens so often. Sets up this third and short. Salinas staying in the shotgun. They'll keep it on the ground. Jones gets enough and more. Oh, and he's man. still on his feet, still moving. Still on his feet inside the 10 yard line. Oh my he goodness. drug three tacklers about 10 yards before finally going down, and it's a first and goal for Salina. But you, we say Jones is 160 pounds. He didn't run like 160 pounds. He ran like a 260 pound. Yeah, it says he brought down by a host of Wildcats. That's not, no exaggeration, folks. That was a host of Wildcats. <laughs> Ball
ball at the nine yard, uh, right between the nine and the eight. So line up with the one running back, excuse me, Landon Ackley to the right of Adams. That's Allstetter in motion. They're going to keep it on the ground. And a flag comes out. It looks like we're going to have a hold as Ackley picked up about four yards, but probably going to see a 10-yard penalty against the Wilds, or excuse me, against the Bulldogs. Oh, that's tough, too, because this Bulldog team's only been penalized 10 times this year, the least amount of penalties in the WBL. And when you're driving down, you're on the eight-yard line, and you get a 10-yard penalty right off the bat. And they mark it off from the spot of the foul, which happened two yards behind the line of scrimmage. So that ends up going all the way back to the 20 and brings up a first and goal, 20 yards to go for Snyder. Adams in the shotgun, looking to pass. Another quick one out to the right side. It's caught. Nick Newell with the grab as he's brought down immediately. Good tackle by Kobe Howard out there for Kenton. Play now, ends up going for just a yard. I'll tell you what, Evan, how many times have we seen this in this year so far? You know, teams on driving down the field, getting good drives, getting long possessions, and then a costly penalty drives them back. Definitely seen it. And, and oftentimes, you know, the first three weeks you say, oh, it's early on in the yeah. season. It's early on. We're almost halfway through That's right. at this point. Game four out of ten. So second down and goal, 19 yards to go. They keep it on the ground with Ackley. And Ackley picks up a few more. Looks like he's near the 12-yard line. Sitting up here, you know, you kind of see a pattern for Salina. I mean, when Jones is in the backfield, it's pretty much off tackle right up the middle type stuff. When Ackley's back there, it's when we're going to go around to the outside a little bit. So if you're getting Wildcats, you're trying to key on that a little bit. So, hmm, you know. It's a good eye right there. They still have Ackley in the backfield, but it's third down and goal, 12 yards to go. Roll out to the right, looking to pass. Adams has a man. It's complete. Another flag came down. They're short of the goal line. Another hold, I think. It is another hold, says the referee. Mark them off 10 more. That one's marked off from the 17, so it'll be back to the 27. A third and goal from the 27 is not what you want to see. Absolutely not. And that's why I said this, this line of team has not been penalized that much this year. You know, and, and now they've had two costly ones here in this drive alone. Put the ball in the 25, so it was marked off from the 15. Now let's see what this Wildcat defensive backs can do. Adams rolls right. Now he's looking back left. They set up the screen. And oh, a good right. job there by Kenton and Devin Miller. Brought down by Garrett Kenton. Brings up fourth and goal. Wow, what a coverage on that one by the Wildcats. It looks like we have another penalty. Oh, okay. Referees having a quick chat over there. Pass was behind the line of scrimmage, so a legal man downfield should be out of play. Referee going to have a chat with Kenton head coach Zach Turner. See if he wants to take his penalty or what. Another hold. They're going to decline that one. So fourth down and goal from the 25-yard line. Be a 42-yard field goal or a 25-yard to go fourth down. Yeah, I don't know what the range is for. Uh, I think their kicker is Carter Allstadter from Salina, but. Go for this one. Adams still in the shotgun. Two wide receivers split out either side. Adams, play action. Plenty of time to throw. He's tossing this one to the back of the end zone and knocked away nicely by the Kenton defense. 
it was Colby Howard. Colby Howard, absolutely. You know, threw that ball right in, right into a lot of traffic. There was four defensive backs back here for uh, Kenton. Colby Howard, able to get up there and get his pole on it and knock it out of the way. So the Kenton offense will take over from their own 25. That chewed off about seven minutes off the clock, though, on that particular drive. Yeah, it sure did. But it's a drive that first line that you can certainly build on. Well, they did a lot of nice things. I mean, the penalties, you know, stalled the drive, but they did a lot of nice things to get down to that point. Kenton with an empty backfield. Corbin's going to keep this one on the ground. Johnston picks up uh, about five yards. We'll see where they, where they put it down. It is on the 30, so a five-yard pickup there for Johnston on the ground. Yeah, Johnston only a sophomore, so he'll be around for a couple more years for Kenton. Three wide receivers out to the left side, but they throw it over oh. the middle, and it's a nice catch and a nice hit. Good job there by Kate Smith, I believe, on the catch. Number 29, Kate Smith, yep. And a great pass by the quarterback right in between three defenders. And it's an HSLC first down. First down, Referee's working on getting the clock going here. Ready to go with three wide receivers set out to the left side. They'll keep it on the ground. And it's a nice pickup on first down, about eight yards. And that was Wilkerson. Wilkerson, or Wilkinson, excuse me. Wilkinson, 47 carries, 159 yards, averaged about 53 yards per game coming into this one here. Tim Wilkinson running the ball. You have Bill and Bob Wilkinson on the right side blocking on the and offensive line. The ball here. Net by Carter Allstetter. And now we'll have a third down as that one only goes for a few yards. Short game leads to third and one. This leaves a lot of options what you can do on third and one right here. But I would guess it would probably go back with either a quarterback keep. Keep this on the ground with Wilkinson. He makes a nice cut, but he dropped the football. And falling on top was Salina. Number 11. I don't have an 11 on my roster. Let's see here. Number 11 would be John Lutz. There it is. Yeah, John Lutz with the recovery. So just like that, Kenton giving the ball right back to Salina with a minute 18 left in the first quarter. And good field position, too, on Salina on their own 45-yard line. Starting the shotgun, two wide receivers split either direction. Tight end lined up on the right side. That's only Kenton's second lost fumble this season. Stays on the ground, Xander Jones. Jones picks up five more. That's a coach's dream. When you can average five yards on the ground, you can run the ball whenever you want, keep the clock moving. I know I've already said it, but the offensive line for Salina doing a great job opening that hole up just off tackle, and he's been able to find it every time. Jones stays in the game. Lined up to the right side of Adams. Keep it on the ground, Jones. Left side, this time only a couple. Looks like they'll give him one yard to bring up third down four. Yeah, defensive line for Kenton on that side. Got a little help from the linebackers that time coming up there, clogging up the hole and stopping him for a short gain. I don't think another play. have to run a play, and it looks like they won't. The clock is at 10 seconds to go. That will do it for the first quarter here at Kent. Still no score on the Wabash Mutual Telephone scoreboard as we step aside. Second quarter coming up after this on WOSN.
Kenton Moose is Hardin County's home for great food, fellowship, and fun. That's the Kenton Moose 428 in Kenton. Online at KentonMoose428.com. Welcome back where the score is 0-0 in Kenton. Salina trying to get something going, but it's third down and four. Nick Adams lined up in the shotgun. Adams wants to pass left to come back route. The ball came out a little funny, and it ends up hitting the ground, and it's incomplete. Braylon Gabes, the intended target, certainly disagrees, but it brings up a fourth down from just beyond midfield. Yeah, Braylon thought he had his arms underneath him to keep it off the ground, but the official was standing right there looking at it. Well, it, first quarter was nothing and nothing, nothing, but if there's a moral victory in anything, time of possession certainly went to slide in that yeah. first quarter. They must have had at least nine minutes of that first quarter. Move the ball very efficiently on the ground. But they line up to punt this one away. Xander Jones, the punter. Nice kick, nice, nice kick. and high, and a fair catch called for at the 17 yard line. Now the Kenton offense comes back onto the field. A lost fumble on their last drive. How are we doing? No, no, you're fine. on their first. Yeah, we talked about the Wildcats offense in their passing game. They're averaging about 195 yards per game in the air. You know, just running about 62 yards. So they are definitely a throwing team. And you can see it on most of their line, most of their sets. You know, three wide outs to one side, two to the other side, nobody in the backfield. They throw this out to the left side. It's caught. That's Tim Wilkinson. And Wilkinson looks like he got back to the line of scrimmage. Good job by the Salina defense. They give him a yard, so it brings him second down and nine. Three wide receivers out to the right side. They keep it on the ground. Wilkinson trying to find some space, and he's brought down. Good job by that defensive line for Salina. Yeah, good job to stay at home, too, by the linebackers. You know. With this spread offense that Kenton runs, you have a tendency to want to spread your guys out a little bit too much. And that could leave uh, Wilkinson, Wilkinson open for the you know, gainers up the middle. So good job by the linebacker to stay where he's supposed to be. I think that's Jack Hansen, Hassan, number five out there in the middle. 23 and a half tackles so far this year coming into this game. And it looked like Wilkinson was having some trouble with his equipment. Kenton was trying to get it sorted out before the end of the play clock, and they couldn't. So they're forced to burn a timeout with 10.42 on the clock. We'll step aside, third and nine coming up when we return on WOSN. Today's scoreboard sponsor is Wabash Mutual Telephone, proud supporter of Mercer County Athletics. Welcome back to Kenton where it's third down and nine and that Wabash Mutual Telephone scoreboard still says 0-0 zero, zero early in the second quarter. Kenton looking to convert, they want to pass left and they do. It will be near the first down, in fact it will be enough for the, S for the HSLC first down. Brady Clemens Beasley over there on the catch. Kenton moves quickly as they keep it on the ground. Wilkinson still can't find running room. Salina's run defense has been fantastic. Carter Allstetter there to make the tackle. No gain on the play. Second down, 10 coming up. Yeah, he's having a hard time finding any kind of hole up, up front there. Slinder with a couple of really good linebackers. Johnston wants to pass out to the right. Has a man, it's caught. That's Tyson Lawrence. And Lawrence has enough for the HSLC first down. Uh, you can give that, that win right there to the uh, Kenton offensive line because they gave that quarterback all the time in the world to, run, to throw that ball. No pressure on him at all, and he was able to find the receiver with no problem. 
Ball on the 40-yard line. Quick pass, that one's tipped up in the air and almost intercepted as it hit three guys on its way to the turf. Pass was intended for Luke Leffler. He almost pulled it down himself when he's falling backwards. Pardon me, that was Colby Howard, the intended target. Second down, 10, three wide receivers split out left. Johnston with the hard count. He'll keep it on the ground. Wilkinson, he's hit hard. My goodness. That was Jack Hansen. Jack Hassan is listed as a linebacker, tight end, and running back. Six feet, 190 pounds. And I'm assuming all awesome. <laughs> I said 23 and a half tackles coming into this game to lead this Bulldog defense. And he's adding to that total right now. Third down and nine. That run went for one yard. Hassan showing blitz. Now takes a step back. Johnston running right. That pass is caught right at the first down marker. As a matter of fact, it's just enough for the HSLC first down. We've seen that a couple times. These receivers know exactly where they have to be. They know where that marker's at to get that first down. They make their cut, go down there, turn right at that spot right there. Ball just beyond midfield. Wilkinson trying to find the outside this time and picks up a couple. Chilcote, the tackler for the Bulldogs. Picks up two yards, second down and eight. Two yards on the play, second and, and that's all right. I mean, if they can keep him honest with the, you know, those running plays like that, keep that defense honest for Salina. Johnston wants to pass. Now throws, and it's intercepted. It got tipped at the line, and it was picked off by Carter Allstetter. Allstetter loses a helmet, but gets a possession back for Salina. Wow. That's only a second pick this year off of Johnson. That ball was just tipped right, you know, by you know, one of the linebackers, maybe. Offensive line or defensive lineman. So Salina will take over from their own 47. Still no score here. A lot of action between the goal lines, but no no scoring. Both teams have their, you know, nice drives going, but they have some, you know, either a penalty or a turnover in this case, and just kind of stalls everything. So I'll tell you what, it's a beautiful night for football, huh? Sure is. Starting to cool down a little bit this week. Adams lines up in the shotgun. And Salina had problems getting the play in, and now are forced to take their first time out of the half with 8.33 to go. Still 0-0 here at Kent. Be right back. The Kenton Moose is Hardin County's home for great food, fellowship, and fun. That's the Kenton Moose 428 in Kenton. Online at kentonmoose428.com. First and 10 for the Bulldogs as they keep the ball on the ground with Xander Jones, and he's brought down in the backfield. He's going to lose five yards. Devin Miller again for Kenton. Tackled by Trevor Robinson. Ball back to the 42 yard line, second down, 17. Fifteen, second down, 15. Salina in the shotgun, two wide receivers split either direction. Adams puts a man in motion. Adams is gonna keep this one, trying to find space on the right side. He picks up a couple, but a flag comes out. I think I saw holding as well. Yep. We talked about that, we're, we're you know, almost midway through this regular season. We're seeing an awful lot of holding still out there. Right. And this is holding number three against Salina. So 
that's a 10 yard penalty. Takes the ball back to the 32 yard line. So it's second and 25. And nothing will frustrate a coach faster than that. I mean, you got a drive going and then you get penalties. And you get a drive going and you get penalties. We started this drive at their own 47. Adams throws this one. Nice touch pass as it's caught. Braylon Gaves with a big pickup. And this third down is going to be very manageable. Just one yard to go. Yeah, great pass over the middle. Even with two defenders on Caleb and Braylon Gabes, he was able to pick that ball up. Just outstanding throw by Nick Adams. Yeah, third and one, I'll take that right now. So from second and 25 to third and one. Jones lined up to the left of Nick Adams. Keep it on the ground, but that's Landon Ackley, and Ackley breaks a tackle and gets an HSLC first down up to the 31, make it the 30-yard line. Yeah, Ackley's a senior, 5'10", 180 pounds. And boy, when he got through that line, that, you know, and he banged right off of uh, one of the linebackers, it looked like, and he just kept right on moving. Usually he's the guy that goes on the outside. This time he went right over to the center. So first and 10. Salina, two wide receivers split either way, man in motion. And that snap, I think it came out too early and just hit the man in motion. We don't have replay here, but it's a loss of one. But. <laughs> line of fell on it. That was the key right there. They've already lost one fumble. Second down, 11. Five and a half to go in this first half. This time, two wide receivers split either direction. They'll throw it quickly out to the left. That's caught by Nathan Rammel. And Rammel wrapped up at the line of scrimmage. Rammel loses a yard. We'll have a third down and 12. Nice tackle by Tyson Lawrence for Kenton. Just held his ground, waited for the receiver to catch the ball. You know, didn't go left or right on him. He just waited for him to turn around and then knock him down. So some work to do for Salina. Third and 12 now. Ken with three linebackers and four guys deep. The blitz from the left side, a flag comes out. It's a false start against Salina. So back them up five yards to make it third and 17. Wow. Salina not able to get any kind of rhythm going right now in this game. They've had, what, three holding penalties we know, and now a false start on this one. I'm still paranoid that I don't have this thing recording. I think I am. I'm only letting the fourth game. Adams runs in the play. He'll likely put this one in the air. I'm just paranoid. And play clock. Almost at zero again, so Salina will take another timeout. I want to remind you that season 18 of Sports Report started Friday night. You can join Patrick Kamler for a full hour of the most comprehensive football coverage around all season long, Fridays at 10 p.m. on WTLW. Still no score here on the Wabash Mutual Telephone scoreboard, a game that is well contested, but like we've said, neither team really able to punch it in, and we've seen error after error, whether it's penalties or turnovers, stalling drives, and forcing these teams, or keeping these teams, excuse me, out of the end zone. Well, neither, neither one of these teams have really had good offensive games so far this season. You know, combine the two of them, there's only 22 points a game. You know, you know you're looking at Salina coming in at about just under 11 points a game. 
Kenton averages just 12 points a game on offense. So neither one of them had their offenses going at all this season, and their defense have given up a lot of points. But tonight, you know, it's really much coming down to the offenses. Somebody on the offensive side has really got to punch something in. Adams has a runner next to him. Adams, play action, wants the pass, throws, that one's caught. It's Landon Ackley, and Ackley gets up to the 25-yard line, needs the 20. So we have a fourth down five. With the ball sitting on the 25-yard line, so. A 42-yard field goal. We've seen a fourth down from the 25 before, and Salina elected to go for it. I'm sure they'll do the same here. This time they'll run three wide receivers out to the left of Nick Adams. Some lone receiver on the right. Adams, quick pass. A lot of space right there for Nick Newell. And Newell's got the HSLC first down. Wow. I don't, I don't know what the Wildcat defense was doing on that one because, you know, if they were worried about the guys on the outside, they let Newell go right over the middle, and he was wide open. I don't think there was anybody within five yards of him. So a first down and 10 from the 12-yard line. Salina knocking on the door of our first score of the game on the Wabash Mutual telephone scoreboard. Adams in the shotgun. Gavin Brown to his left. He'll give this to Brown, who's met in the backfield and brought down. Looks like big number 50 in there on the tackle. That's Jake Kennedy. Well, we've seen Salina in this situation before, and they ended up with a penalty to drive their, and to stall their drive and drive them back. So. If they can avoid any penalties, they get a good opportunity here to you know, put something in the end zone. Play clock down to 10. We're at 2.15 on the game clock. Adams hands this one off. Left side. This time it's Jones, and he's wrapped up at the line of scrimmage. So a running game that was working in this half, now starting to show signs of weakness. Well, Kobe Howard on the tackle right there for coming up from a safety position. I think Kenton's made some nice adjustments on the defensive side of the ball to stop that run. They've been able to, you know, they get a couple of guys from their safety positions to come up, kind of fill the gaps, you know, that were left open in the first, you know, first quarter and most of the second quarter. So, you know, they made some nice adjustments the coaching staff has for the Wildcats. Third down, 12. Salina needs the two-yard line. Looking to pass out to the right. It's a comeback route. It's caught, and breaking a tackle and getting into the end zone was Adam Faber. And our first score of this game will make the folks at Wabash Mutual Telephone happy. Yeah, nice route. He ran out there on the right side, turned around, and caught that ball, and was able to shake off the defender. Just kind of waltz his way into the end zone then. Six nothing as Adam Faber gets the score. With 120 to go in this half. Kick is up nice and high and straight through the upright. Seven nothing. Salina on top. 120 to go first half. You're watching High School Football on WOSN. Seven nothing here in Kenton. Salina on top after Adam Faber catches a 12 yard touchdown pass. Now Salina boots this one away. Kenton will return. This one almost over the head of Tim Wilkinson, and now Wilkinson with the big return, dragging a tackler. And a flag comes out back at the 13-yard line. And that is 
definitely not what you want. If you're Kenton, you return this out to the 33. And at the end of the play, far away from the ball, some unsportsmanlike conduct. Referee having a chat. Referee really not happy about no, that one either. Not. He's pretty animated. Personal foul. He's still upset. Yeah, he Personal like foul that against Kent. <laughs> wow. That almost felt like a personal penalty against the referee. I, I know. I, you think they ran into him? So the ball marched off 15 yards, and they'll start this drive from their own uh, 18, excuse me. 114 on the clock, two timeouts. Johnston in the shotgun. I'm sure Kenton would love to tie this up before the half. Johnston looking to pass, throws this one out to the left. Caught by Tyson Lawrence. He's got an HSLC first down. Tyson Lawrence, a senior, 5'5", 145 pounds. He's been a key receiver here tonight for Kenton. Johnston again throws this one. Nice catch. Cooper Johnston. Cooper's got another HSLC first down. Kenton going to that hurry up offense. They want to they put some points on the board if they can. Again, looking left. Johnston now pulls it down. Rolls, throws, and nice job getting that out of play with 44 on the clock, and it stops with the incompletion. You got time for, you know, second and 10, you got time for about three more plays. They'll split three wide receivers out to the right. Wilkinson in the backfield, Johnston rolling right. Johnston still looking, now throws, and he's got a man. It's oh. caught by Tyson Lawrence. And Kenton's going to take one of those two timeouts with 39 on the clock. It was enough for a first down. And Tyson Lawrence upset with he slid and he slid down because he had a little bit of real estate in front of him. And also the sideline not far. Could have saved a timeout, but Kenton moving the ball very nicely. They started this drive from their 13 and only took about 40 seconds of game clock to get down to the 43 yard line of Salina. Maybe this is kind of offense they need to run the rest of the game. Just right. hurry up offense, just get up there to the line of scrimmage and throw the ball. 40 seconds might take about 10 minutes. It's gonna be throw, 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 throw. No score in this game until moments ago. Go. Adam Faber, Faber, excuse me, caught a touchdown pass from Nick Adams. <laughs> kind of ironic too because Salina has been using the rushing game all night long to get themselves in position and they score on a passing game play. That's right. So Kenton will line up. Still one timeout left. Split a receiver far out left, one tucked in on the right. Johnston. Wants to throw right, tosses this one up in the air, and no one there. Looks like his receiver, Tyson Lawrence, came back instead of running straight downfield. A little miscommunication, but no harm done as it brings up second and 10. And he had to get rid of that ball, too, because he had big number 51 coming down on him, Rutledge for uh, Salinas. So he didn't have a whole lot of time to sit back here and look for receivers. Johnston. Nowhere to go, now throws, and that one is caught. How about that? Wow. Tough catch right there as Colby Howard brings it in and toes the line. Third and two as the clock stops at 26. Johnston throws this one, and that one's intercepted. Look out, look out. Jumping the route was Landon Ackley, and he's got some work to do as he crosses the 20, and he stays on his feet into the end zone. 
A big touchdown, 70-yard return. Wow. By Landon Ackley. And Ackley timed that just perfectly. He sat back there and waited for that, saw the opening and just grabbed it. And then it was a foot race down that right sideline and he was able to win it. 13 to zero now on the Wabash Mutual Telephone scoreboard. PAT pending as Carter Allstetter comes back onto the field. Allstetter's kick is up and it is wide left. So the score stays at 13 to zero, 13 seconds to go to halftime. You're watching high school football on WOSN. Welcome back to Kenton High School where it's 13-0. Salina on top. Landon Ackley with a 70-yard interception returned for touchdown. And the Wildcats were doing a nice job of moving the ball downfield with their short passing plays. And this one here just, you know, thrown out there in no man's land and Ackley able to pick it off and run it back. And, you know, nobody on that side for Kenton really it came down to Johnson trying to run him down and it was you know, there's no way. This one will be returned by Tim Wilkinson. Right side, he crosses the 30. No flags down this time as he goes down at the 32-yard line. So Kenton with eight seconds left, one timeout left. See if they try anything here or just kneel it. I think this stage you just want to go into the locker room down 13 to nothing and not make any mistakes. You know, just at, watching after that last one. And it looks like that's exactly what they'll do here. Johnston catches it, takes a knee. And that will do it for the first half. It's 13-0, Salina on top. We'll be back with the second half after a break. You're watching High School Football on WOSN. HSLC of Kenton is committed to serving our community since 1888. Offering infinite opportunities and service you can count on. Home savings and loan, member FDIC, equal housing lender. Welcome back for the start of the second half. Kenton trailing the visiting Salina Bulldogs, 13 to nothing. Evan Skilleter and Dar Nevergal with you. And Dar, I started the broadcast here in the second half, and I looked up and saw that beautiful moon. Oh, man, isn't that Hopefully something? we can get a shot of that wow. here soon. But for right now, it's Salina returning the opening kickoff of the second half, and it's a nice one as Braylon Gabes gets up to the 36-yard line. 13-0, Salina with a touchdown pass and also an interception that went 70 yards to the house. Yeah, that was a tough first half for both teams. I mean, a lot of good things happened in between the, the goal lines, but neither team able to really push it in. Salina able to get on the board. They were doing a nice job running the ball, getting themselves in position, but then, you know, they came up with a big pass play, 13 yards for a touchdown. And then Kitten was moving the ball down with time running out in that first half, and then one mistake, and that's all it takes. And I told somebody earlier on before this game started, this game may end up on one big play, really doing the, doing the damage. And, Let's hope for Ken's sake it wasn't that one big player and that interception for 70 yards. Salina starts with the ball on the ground as Xander Jones runs off the right side. A helmet came off. Jones picks up four yards, second down, six coming up. And as you said, Salina really ran the ball well to start this game. Kenton started to figure it out a little bit, but nonetheless, Salina had spent a lot of time with the ball in their offense's hands. Yeah, and they, and they were their worst enemy in the first half. You know, costly penalties. They drive down, they were down with only eight yard line, two penalties drove, drove that them back and killed that run in that particular possession. Another big penalty, a 10 yard penalty on the holding again. You know, stop their momentum on another one. So they've been their worst and en their own worst enemy so far tonight, but they are able to get 13 points on the board. This time, Jones wrapped up for a loss of a yard. 
So a third down coming up, it'll be third and seven. Well, we saw in that first half towards the, you know, midway through the second quarter, the Kenton coaches and made a nice adjustment, you know, trying to stop that run for Salina. And, you know, they were bringing up a safety, you know, kind of plugging the hole up there. Linebackers did a little shifting around, you know, because they were, you know, they were playing a three down, three players down in the front there. And that left a lot of holes for runner, for the runners. So they kind of made some adjustments, kind of plugged that up a little bit, kind of stopped that slide of run. Adams wants to pass this time. Adams throwing the right side and it's caught and it's complete. How about the grab there from Adam Faber as he has enough for the HSLC first down. I'll tell you what, that was a beautiful pass by Nick Adams too. You know, Adams only hitting about 53% of his passes, but that one there was laid right on the money, right on that sideline, right over the shoulder of the defensive back and right into the receiver's hands. And you couldn't ask for a better thrown ball than that one right there. Ball into Kenton territory up to the 41 yard line. Adams now with three wide receivers split out left and two of them run a little too early. That'll be a false start. Five yard penalty against Salina. They got tacked with two official holding penalties, another one that was declined in the first half. And now this penalty dropping them back five yards. And I, I said, you know, Slay came to this game with only 10 penalties for 70 yards coming in, the least in the WBL. And so far tonight, they really tacked them on. This is like five penalties we've seen on this team. Adams throws quickly out to the left side. Rammel with the catch. And Rammel picks up a couple. Looks like he's back to the original line of scrimmage, maybe just a yard short. So second down 11 coming up. That's been a real effective pass play for Salina, that little out pattern like that, getting them about three or four yards, kind of setting up that big play down the, down the right side line. And another long possession for Salina too. They've gone and eaten off, you know, two minutes off the clock already. Adams wants to pass again. Quick one. This one is Whoa. through the hands of the receiver. He's able to grab it, and now a flag comes out. Yeah, I think we're getting a late hit on that one. So Ramel picks up eight yards on the catch. It would have brought up a third down. We have a flag right next to the football, and it's a personal foul against Kenton. So that's 15 yards. And a big one. Wow. And I think the Kenton coaching staff is you know, arguing that he was bobbling that ball, you know, trying to pull it in and stuff when the guys was hitting him. So how do you count it as a late hit when he really didn't have possession of the ball at the last second? I also saw two Kenton players run into each other at yeah. the end of the play. I don't know, just a bit of a confusing play there, but it's a first down nonetheless. Ball at the 18-yard line. Adams in the shotgun again. We'll keep this one on the ground. Jones. Oh, look out. Look cuts out. up field. Jones near the goal line. Jones into the end zone. Touchdown, Bulldogs. Wow, what a big hole the offensive line opened up for him. Yeah, he could drive a truck to that thing he had right there. There was nothing in the middle of the field to stop him. Xander Jones from 18 yards out. The third score for Salina. Now it's 19 to nothing on the Wabash Mutual Telephone scoreboard. And looks like they will try the PAT. They missed one earlier. And now instead of Allstetter, we've got a different kicker out there. It looks like Logan Billerman. Billerman puts this one up, Whoa. and it's nice, high, long, and good. 20 to nothing. Salina on top of Kenton as we step aside. We'll be right back with more high school football on WOSN after this. There's a shot of the moon for you as we return to Kenton. A beautiful night for football. Clear skies, a nice orange moon right above the scene here. And Salina with a 20 to nothing lead on the Wabash Mutual Telephone scoreboard. Rolling right now. 
over their WBL foe. Evan Skilleter and Darn Evergall with you. McNunez on the camera, doing a nice job getting that shot of the moon for you. This one will be returned from the five yard line. Wilkinson with a nice hole as he crosses the 30 yard line. Wilkinson, a very dangerous runner on that. His kickoff returns and slide doing a nice job bottling him up. <clears throat> Now we have to see how the Wildcats respond. Both teams, like you said, coming in this game one and two, one and one, the WBL, you know, neither one have a really good offensive season so far. So Kenton's really got to come out here firing. You know, they had some, you know, speed up offense towards the end of the first half, and very effective. Let's see what they can do on here. Johnston opens this drive with a completed pass to Tim Wilkinson. Goes for five yards, second and five coming up. So Johnson averaging, you know, throwing for 65% of his passes, a lot of them short, short passes, but very efficient. First down. This one goes for an HSLC first down. Kenton going to that hurry up offense we saw at the end of the half, which looked really good. It was effective until. An interception. Johnston, swing pass right side. This one's caught one-handed by Tyson Lawrence. And Lawrence with a nice gain. I'll tell you what, Evan, what really impresses me about Tyson Lawrence is his hands. He's got such great hands. I mean, you saw it on that play right there, able to reach up, pull that ball down. He's only five foot five, but what a receiver he has. He's, you know, he's made a lot of nice, Catches out there, a lot of nice run, you know, patterns he's ran. Tim Wilkinson gets another home savings and loan of Kenton first down. Crossing into Salina territory up to the 45. Good mix of the pass and run here by the offense for Kenton. Johnston rolls left. Johnston. Still looking, now throws, oh, and that one's caught. And great pass and catch right there as Grady Clement Beasley pulls it in. And the only place that he could throw that ball, and Johnson threw it right there on the money, just above the ground level. Kenton still moving quickly. Wilkinson will run this one left this time. Wilkinson picks up three. I'll tell you what, Evan, I'm starting to see a pattern develop here in this possession. You know, run one, pass one, run one, pass one. Second down, seven. Second seven. Johnston throws left. This is Tyson Lawrence, and Lawrence wrapped up and brought down. And it looks like he might have lost a yard. We'll see where they give him. It is indeed a loss of one, so third and eight coming up. Good job by the defensive back, though, just to hang in there. Three wide receivers split out to Johnston's right. Just over six and a half to go in the third quarter. Kent staff switches things up. Play clock at 10. Wilkinson moves from right to left. Johnston wants to pass. Looks deep, pulls it back down. Still looking, no one open. Now he throws and that one's incomplete. Good coverage there by Caleb Gavis. And great coverage by Salina because Johnson had all the time in the world again to sit back here and, and look for receivers. Another great job by Ken's offensive line to give him all the time he needed. But, you know, Salina covering it up well. Johnston on fourth and eight, looking right. Tosses this one up and well out of bounds as Kent not able to punch it in and the score remains 20 to zero on the Wabash Mutual Telephone scoreboard. We'll be right back with more after this. Today's scoreboard sponsor is Wabash Mutual Telephone, a proud supporter of Mercer County Athletics. Welcome back to Kenton High School where it's 20 to zero on that Wabash Mutual Telephone scoreboard. 
Salina on top. And they have the football starting this drive from their own 31. Great job by Salina's defensive backs to keep it covered up. You know, Johnson had all the time to throw. Pitch this out to the right, Xander Jones. Looking for space, doesn't find any as he's brought down behind the line of scrimmage. Star, this stadium is a bit quiet tonight. A little bit. We're on the home side and they all. Looks like they dropped a yard, second down, 11. thing is, is when you give the ball back to the Bulldogs, their, their run game and, and mixing in just enough passes, you know, to keep the chains moving, and they can really eat a lot of time off this clock. They keep it on the ground, and that's Landon Ackley met in the backfield immediately by Kyle Thrush. Falls forward for positive yardage, just gets one back, so third down 10. No, and everybody knows this is a passing down here for Salina, but you, know, you see Kenton, Kenton already dropping four guys back. They've been pretty much playing that all night long. Three, three down linemen, four linebackers, and then the, the guys in the backfield. It actually goes for two yards, so third down nine. Trips out to the left side for Salina. Adams wants to throw, now going deep. He has oh, a man, man look out. that's complete down the sideline. And he called him, the referee called him out of bounds at the 30 yard line, but still a huge play as Adam Faber brings it in and a perfectly placed ball by Nick Adams goes for the HSLC first down. And you, you can see the arm on, on Nick Adams right there, but you know, Faber has been able to beat his guy down that right sideline. You know, time in and time out when it's just a foot race between the two of them. So, you know, he just got himself wide open. What a perfect pass, though, by Nick Adams. We've seen him throw a couple of them now. They're right on the money, and that one's that one there certainly was. Back in the shotgun for Adams. Two running backs to either side. Snap a bit high. They keep it on the ground. Xander Jones, and Jones, a nice pickup. Gets five between the tackles. Second down five coming up. 423 and counting on the clock in this third quarter. These Bulldog running backs, man, they just keep churning and churning, getting those extra one, two, three yards. Even after the hit, we've seen both of them, you know, carry defenders, you know, two or three yards down the field. Ball at the 25 yard line. Adams taking his time, play clock down to five. Run a little counter play back to Jones, and Jones met in the backfield, loses a yard. He was buried back there, I'll tell you what. Kyle Thrush with the tackle again for Kent, so that brings up a third and six. And Kyle Thrush, a junior, 5'10", 190 pounds. And he met Sandra Jones one-on-one -on -one right there and won that battle. Hawk now down to 305 for this third and six. Adams wants to pass, now throws, and another nice catch. Faber still on his feet. Faber inside the 10. Adam Faber having a nice night. Yeah, six foot one senior, and he's been able to come up with some big, big catches out there for the Salina Bulldog team. And that one right there, he just bounced off the defenders. Takes that one up to the seven yard line. So first and goal. Faber running some excellent routes too. I mean, he, not only down the sidelines, but that one there cutting across the middle just perfectly. Adams, this time it's Ackley in the backfield. Ackley's gonna run this one. Ackley runs over a tackler, still on his feet, close to the goal line, and the oh. extra effort 
pushes him across for the Salina touchdown. My goodness, how about the Bulldogs? But you, you saw all the guys come up there and say, yeah, we'll just push this whole pile. So it was a matter of who had the strength to push it one way or the other way, and Salina won that battle. Twenty-six to nothing on the Wabash Mutual Telephone scoreboard. Salina with a PAT pending. Trot out Billerman once again. He hit the last one. Billerman's kick is up and it is good. 27 0 to score here in Kent as we step aside. Kenton Moose is Hardin County's home for great food, fellowship, and fun. That's the Kenton Moose 428 in Kenton. Online at KentonMoose428.com. Well, bad news for Kenton fans. The score is 27 0. Salina on top. The good news is they just announced snacks are half price at the <laughs> there concession <you> stands. <laughs> Salina will kick this one away after a nine-yard touchdown run from Nick Ackley. And this one down to the two-yard line. It'll be returned on the right side. Sorry, that was Landon Ackley with the touchdown as Tim Wilkerson breaks attack. And Wilkinson up across the 40-yard line. And Darn, one of the things you mentioned in the pregame show and a key to the game for Salina is stopping this Kenton return game. They do a really nice job, and, and they've certainly showed that to us tonight. No, they have, and you know they haven't let Wilkinson break a long one yet. You know that was a nice return by him right there, but still they contained him, kept him from you know breaking that long run down there. But yeah, that was one of the keys you know, right off the bat was you know got to stop that. And like I said, and the other thing you know too was to stop the deep ball and the big play by by Kenton, and they've been able to do that as well. Kenton lining up from their own 43. Tyson Lawrence goes in motion. They'll run a little counter play. And they're gonna run a pass, or a running back pass, excuse me. But the pass goes out of bounds. They had that play set up nicely, but the thrower could not get the ball out there. That was Grady Clayman Beasley. Now this is, when you're down 27 nothing, you start pulling everything you can out of your playbook. Salina's done a really nice job stopping this Kenton passing game. They haven't been able to stop it completely, but they've contained it. Now an open man on the right side. Nice pass and catch there. Cooper Johnston with the catch and another HSLC first down. And Cooper Johnston came in averaging 17 and a half yards per catch. And, but they haven't used him a whole lot tonight. Johnston. Looking, nowhere to go, pulls it down and he's sacked. And it looks like big 68, Timothy Nowitzki was there first. Nowitzki a little slow to get back up. Uh, it looks like 56, Samuel Etzler on the ground. And as they tend to him, we will step aside. 140 to go, third quarter. 27 nothing. Salina on top. Welcome back to Kenton High School. Second down, 13. Johnston takes the snap, wants to throw, looking to pass. Going deep to the end zone, has a oh, man, and how about the pass? And the catch by Tyson Lawrence. And Kenton with their first score of the game on the Wabash Mutual Telephone scoreboard. Wow, what a pass. I mean, right into the hands of Tyson Lawrence. And I mean, that, that pass is impressive on a lot of different levels. But like I said, Tyson Lawrence is a great receiver. Only five foot five though, so he's out there against a much bigger defensive back usually. And that pass went right over the shoulder of the defensive back right into Tyson Lawrence's hands. Abby Temple on for the PAT. Good snap, good hold. Kick is up, and it is good. 27 to seven, Salina on top on the Wabash Mutual Telephone Scoreboard. 
You're watching High School Football on WOSN. Today's scoreboard sponsor is Wabash Mutual Telephone, a proud supporter of Mercer County Athletics. Welcome back to Kenton High School. 27-7, Salina on top. Kenton to kick this one away and boot it up in the air. It's caught nicely by Gavin Brown, who goes down smartly. Well, you knew it was happen, bound to happen sooner or later for the Kenton Wildcats. I mean, they've been flirting with it all night long able to finally connect on a 30-yard touchdown pass and just a beautiful th kick and throw and beautiful catch on the other end. And we're only in the third quarter, so there's still a lot of time to play in this game. 20-point lead isn't that much when you're facing a passing offense. But the biggest key now for Kenton is stopping this run game that has done a nice job chewing up clock. Yeah, there's no doubt Salinas won the time of possession so far in this game. They've done a nice job of mixing in the run with the pass, but you know, Kenton made some nice adjustment, adjustments to stop them, that run that they're, you know, they're going up in the first half and forcing you know, Nick Adams and, his, and the Salinas Bulldogs to go to a passing game more. Adams in the shotgun, hands this one off. It's Xander Jones. And Jones, another nice pickup. Seven, seven yards on that carry. And it's indeed seven yards, so second and three coming up. I can see, you know, slide on the second and three. You know you got the running game, but let's let's go for something. I mean, you know. You just saw Kenton come down with a long pass play for a touchdown. So let's let's open it up a little bit so we can you know reciprocate on our end. You got Faber out there who runs an excellent outside route. You know, see if we can hit him again with that one. Keep it on the ground, Jones. Jones has enough for the HSLC first down. Big news here at Kenton. They yeah, two for one hot dogs. Oh my goodness. One of the biggest cheers we've heard from the Kenton sideline. But I don't see a whole lot of people getting up and running down to get them yet. So we have 22 seconds till the, <laughs> the third quarter ends. This is like a mad dash for that concession stand. <laughs> it sure will. See how fast I can move here in a moment. <laughs> and play clock is under. The game clock. Let me run down. And Let me run down. I'm not too sure what happened. Can no, I'm not either. Are gonna get an explanation, but either way, it's the end of the third quarter here, and your score at the end of the third, 27 to seven, Salina on top. Fourth quarter coming up after the break on WOSN. Kent Moose is Hardin County's home for great food, fellowship, and fun. That's the Kent Moose 428 in Kenton. Online at kentmoose428.com. Welcome back to Kenton High School for the start of the fourth quarter. And Salina kicks off the fourth quarter with a run. It's Landon Ackley with the jet sweep. He gets up to the Salina 49-yard line, which will bring up a second down five. A nice cut back by uh, Ackley on that one there. Yeah, Ken's got to force a turnover of some kind right now. Salani doesn't cough up the ball that often. I said they have not lost a fumble yet this year. And the fact that their turnover ratio for the Bulldogs is plus three, which is the uh, best in the NFL, or best in the WBL. Second and five, they keep it on the ground. Xander Jones met in the backfield, driven back. He loses a yard, so the third and six coming up as the clock continues to tick. Both teams still with three timeouts. Well, we've already seen Salina can hang onto that football for a long time, so you've got to force some kind of you know turnover 
on this bulldog. And they, they don't have to throw the ball, so the best you can do is try to force a fumble, something, you know, kind of strip it away from them and get the ball back. See if they can get the stop here. Third down, six. Adams looking to pass. Quick one, it's caught, and it goes for the HSLC. First down, complete that time to Carter Allstetter. Nice, nice job by Adams. Just a one-step drop, fire over the middle, get your receiver you know, open really quick. Don't give the Kenton Wildcats time to get in there and put any pressure on you. Ball up to the 39-yard line. Again, Salina, such a nice job with clock management. Picking up first downs on third. They'll run this one to the right side. Nice tackle, but not before Ackley goes for about four yards. But you watch this line of offense between the run and the pass, and Nick Adams has done a nice job with the passing game as well. You know, and then you've got Ackley and you've got you know Xander Jones back here in your backfield. It's hard to believe they're coming into this game at one and two, you know, and not and only scoring 10.7 points a game. I mean, they've moved the ball, moved the ball all night long. You know, they've, they've ran a nice mix of the run and pass. They've done everything they can. You know. I, I just am surprised that this offense has only gotten one win. Yeah, I'm with you. This this team definitely looks like they know how to run an offense. Their defensive backfield has looked pretty nice tonight against a really good passing team as that run goes for a couple more. Third down coming up. Well, and then you've got, you know, you look at back here, you got Adam Faber out there who runs some great routes. I mean, you know, down that sideline, he's got the speed to get out, you know, outrun his defenders. And then he's got a nice job of, you know, he's big enough that he can go over the middle to make the catch. So there's a lot of elements of this offense that really, you know, you would think they've been able to get more yardage than they have. They only came in averaging 167 yards per game. And that just does, it just surprised me. Now, granted, you're playing Kenton's defense who's struggled all so far this season as well. Adams. Completes the pass out to Faber. Faber makes a couple guys miss. Yardage is enough for a first down. A flag came out, though, at the beginning of that play. Three trying to sort things out, and it's a legal pr procedure against Salina. So that'll negate the yardage and move back five yards and try this third down again. Yeah, they're nice. To continue on a little bit with that too. You look at the slide, they came into this game the least penalized team in the WBL. You know, their turnover ratio is the you know, plus three, the best in the WBL. And yet they're down at the bottom as far as offense and defense goes in the league. And then, Maybe this game here, you know, if it continues the way it's continuing right now, it might be a turnaround for this particular team. Kenton fans wanted a false start. Quite a late call there, but they get it ultimately. Yeah. Sounds like the Kenton sideline might have talked the referee into I that one. Did. I don't think it's the wrong call by any means. No, sometimes that happens. I mean. So another penalty, two in a row, right after you talk about them being the least penalty, penalized team. Well, this tonight WBL. they've blown that out of the water. <laughs> I mean, they've got at least seven or eight penalties tonight. I'll tell you what, that clock keeps ticking. <laughs> so if they just keep getting these penalties, they keep running that clock down. Third down and long, 13 yards to go. Adams looking to pass. Rolling out, now throws, and that's well out of bounds. The clock stops at seven and a half. Fourth and long. Nice catch by. sends the punt team out. Nice catch by Coach Zach Turner down there for Kenton. <laughs> but you're right, Evan, the clock continues to run. There's no doubt time of possession has been all Salina tonight. 
They've played really, really well offensively. And their defense has been able to stop a very efficient passing game for, for Kenton. I mean, Kenton's got a, a great quarterback. They've got a lot of good receivers. Look at that punt. Nice kick. And that goes oh, out my. of bounds That's before be the two. goal line. My goodness. Hats off there to Nathan Rammel. Who puts that out at the five yard line. What a kick. So Kenton now with a first and 10 from their own five. 7.27 on the clock, three timeouts remaining. Yeah, that's one thing that always kills me when you look at punting averages. The other guy's averaging 29 yards a kick. Well, yeah, but that kind of kick, you know, isn't going to go 29 yards, but right. it's going to get you what you want. Right, right, right. So now Kent, with five wide receivers. Throw this out left. This is Wilkinson. Wilkinson cuts back inside, makes a couple guys miss. Picks up about six yards. Yeah, Wildcats going to have to go to this hurry up offense again. They don't have much time to make up 20 points. They got seven minutes, just coming up on the seven minute mark. Make it a seven yard gain, second and three here. Johnston rolls right, now wants to pass left, throws this one over the top. And it's intercepted, or did it hit the ground? It's held on to by Carter Allstetter. And it looked like he almost lost possession of that ball when it hit the ground. Was it Allstetter or was it Adam Faber? I think maybe it was Adam Faber. Faber came up a little bit, well, a little bit limp, limpy, if you will. I think it was Adam Favor because I think it uh, came up limping because they knocked his legs right out from under him after he caught that ball. Well, either way, Kenton gives the ball right back to Salina. The Bulldogs can go right back to the ground and run this clock. And I'll tell you what, just under seven minutes, it's going to be nothing for this offense to run off. Jones runs this one to the right side, picks up a couple. Looks like they'll give him two, so a second and eight coming up. See a lot of guys coming up, kind of limping a little bit, and holding their sides. This has been a pretty hard hitting game. I mean, we've seen some, a couple of tackles that really, you could hear them up here. Very physical, that's a WBL, very physical anyhow. Absolutely. Two wide receivers split out left. Adams takes the snap and of course keeps it on the ground. Jones, right through the middle. Between the tackles gets five more yards. Third down, four coming up. Third down, four yards to go. And yeah, that's gonna be a key third down play here for Salina. If they can get the first down, move the chains again, you know, they can really wrap this up. Ken's gotta get a stop here. Play clock down to seven. Allstetter goes in motion. They hand this off to the right side. Nice cut up field. Landon Ackley has enough for the HSLC first down. He crosses the 30-yard line up to the 29. Well, that could pretty much seal this one right here. With five minutes, 22 seconds left, counting. That's a big first down for Salina. Kind of see it a little bit in the Kenton defense. You know, they weren't able to stop that. Keep, keep saying all this stuff. They must have had way too many <laughs> snacks down there. Pizza's down to a dollar. <laughs> two hot for dogs one are two for them. one. Wow. They're, they're going to start passing out these these snacks <laughs> like they're the, uh, the footballs you throw after touchdowns. Start seeing pizzas flying all over the place. Jones keeps it on the ground to the left side now. I think you can make a missile out of a couple of those, those hot dogs, I'm sure. Oh, 
I'll tell you what, if those glizzies hit three for one, I'm out of here. <laughs> you got to tell me I'm going to finish this myself, huh? <laughs> wrap, wrap this one up, man. Evan's gone. Second down, eight. Two runners in the backfield. It's Jones on the right, Gavin Brown on the left. Adams hands us to Jones. Jones might have some space on the outside this time. He makes a couple guys miss, and he has enough for the first down. Inside the 20 now. Nice job following his, his blockers, too, to get that out there. Ball at the 18-yard line. 3.43. Clock continues to tick. Want to thank our sponsors again tonight. Wabash Mutual Telephone, Home Savings and Loan of Kenton, and Kenton Moose. So I'd like nothing more than tack another one on here. Left side this time, it's Landon Ackley. Don't forget to visit Kenton Moose. It's Hardin County's home for great food, fellowship, and fun. That's the Kenton Moose 428 in Kenton online at kentonmoose428.com. Just under three minutes left to play in this game, and Slime's content just to, you know, maybe run this out. I know. Clock under three. Xander Jones again in the backfield, lined up to the right of Adams. Adams keeps this one left side, and a flag comes in. I can see that hole from up here. Clock stops at 2.29. I don't think Adams, that's only maybe the second time I've seen him carry it tonight. I'm not sure if that was a designed run, the read option, or broken play. It didn't look broken by any means, but either way, the hold negates any yardage they might have picked up. And Ball back to the 25 yard line for a second down and about 17 yards. And the Bulldogs in no hurry to run any plays off right now. And now another flag comes in as that play clock hits zero. Delay of game, we'll mark them off five more yards. Well, Dan, Salina will go to two and two on the season, two and one in the WBL. Ken will drop to one and three, one and two in the WBL. And as you said earlier on, Evan, I mean, two and two is a lot better than one and three when it comes to that. I mean, Absolutely. Especially in the WBL, where you've got so many good teams, you got to light up on the top, you know, uh, throwing, you know, Van Wert. Van Wert. There's a pass this time, and that's going to be incomplete. Almost intercepted. Jones was the intended target, went through his hands. Coming in tonight, you had Elida, two and three and zero, two and zero in the league. Van Wert, Wapkinetta, St. Mary's all at the top of the league. A lot of teams at one and one as well. St. Mary's, Salina, Kenton, and Shawnee, all at one and one. Bath and Ottawa, Glendor, off to slow starts. They'll keep this one on the ground on third down. Jones cuts back up field, picks up a couple. Clock will continue to tick. They'll get it down to about a minute before they have to run this next play. And it's one of those weird situations where it's fourth and long. You're up by plenty, but you're not really in a spot where you can pump the ball. 
Hey, you have to run a play. I mean, you could take another penalty, delay a game. I get fourth and 23, but then get a new set of play clock. Which is what they might end up doing. And indeed, the clock, the play clock hits zero, so Salina's actually going to take a timeout. So with that timeout, we will step aside to watch high school football on WOSN. Kenton Moose is Hardin County's home for great food, fellowship, and fun. That's the Kenton Moose 428 in Kenton online at kentonmoose428.com. Fourth down and long as Salina keeps the ball on the ground to the left side, and they will turn this one over with 57 seconds on the clock. Got an injured player on the field. Looks like some cramping, perhaps as Kenton will come back out. So ultimately, a, a tough game for the Wildcats, a team that showed some promise, especially when they ran the, the fast-paced offense to no huddle. But not able to finish off drives, some interceptions, some untimely penalties. Well, I think, I think win. yeah, and I think the biggest thing was, you know, they were only down by, by one score towards the end of that first half. And then they threw the 70 yard interception for a touchdown. And I think really set the tone, you know, of this game. I mean, one big play like that, you know, yeah, you had the whole second half to go, but, you know, Salina was already controlling the time of possession. They were already, you know, keeping the most of the game, the clock on their side. You know, they were able to run the ball. They, they shot themselves a little bit with penalties and stuff. But they had already set the tempo of what this game was going to be. And that, then you turn around and get a big play like that. And that kind of just turned everything towards their favor and gave them that momentum going into the second half. You know, and, and then, you know, they just turned it on from there. I mean, they, you know, slowly but surely built their lead up to where Kenton was forced to go to the pass even more than what they were doing. So, yeah, give credit to this line team. I mean, they played a very good game. Penalties aside, you know, they they did a lot of good things. And they got a couple of really nice running backs back here. You know, and Nick Adams was really impressive for as far as I'm concerned. A senior, you know, he showed he's a senior, good leadership back there. Um, but I'll tell you what, if I had to play, pick a most valuable player in this game, I think I'd go with Adam Faber. I mean, that young man, you know, ran some routes out there. I mean, you know, got himself open, beat his defender down the sideline, you know, a lot of times, you know. I'd give that guy, you know, the MVP of this game. Big time from Adam Faber. He has nice size, great hands. And we think he had that last interception too against Kenton as well. We were debating that back and forth as whether it was Carter Allstead or him. Kenton back to work. They throw this one and they have a first down. As Colby Howard brings in the pass. Crosses the 35. It's an HSLC first down. And on the flip side, Evan, I'd say Kenton, Kenton's got a lot to look forward to the rest of the season, too. I mean, you know, Johnson's a you know, good quarterback, got a strong arm, got a couple of nice receivers. Tyson Lawrence is a really good receiver for them. You know, so they got some things they can look forward to. They got to smooth out a couple of rough spots and that kind of thing, but they, they can put some more victories on their side of the, of the ledger as well. Pass was incomplete, so it's a second and 10. Clock stopped at 35. Johnston looking to throw. Still looking, now might have to run. Straddles the line of scrimmage, then goes forward, runs out of bounds, and that's another HSLC first down. Out of bounds, so the clock will stop at 24. First down, Wildcats. Put the ball down on the 50-yard line. Johnston in the shotgun. Three wide receivers split out right. Johnston wants to pass. Still looking. Now he runs. 
It was almost a big collision, but a nice job there by Jack Hassan, kind of pulling up there before he did anything he was going to regret. At this point in the game, you don't really need to, no, you don't need to throw that. those hits anyway. The other thing you can point for Kenton as far as going forward is they, they have a very good offensive line, really. I mean, they've been able to give Johnson a lot of protection tonight, a lot of time to find receivers open. Another pitch and catch there as Tyson Lawrence hauls it in. And another home savings and loan of Kenton first down. Five wide receivers set. Clock at five. This might be the last play of the game. Out of bounds, .5 on the point clock. Point five, we'll get one more in. Uh, run one more and try to get that Kenton Moose touchdown. It's a five yard pickup, second down, five. It looks like Kenton might just take a knee here. No, they'll stay in the shotgun. Splitting two wide receivers out to the right. Looking to throw. Last play of the game goes to the end zone and is incomplete. And that does it as John Lutz knocks that one down. And your final score, 27 to 7. Salina with the victory. Dar, a good one for Salina. Your quick final thoughts. Well, like I said, I think both these teams have some positives to go forward with, you know. They, Kenton has good receivers, they have a good quarterback. They can put some positive, you know, slant on this as well. But Salina played a really good game outside of the penalties, outside of stopping their own self a couple times. But they were able to, to recover from that, you know, control the clock, control the tempo of the game, and that's a big thing when you can do that. So I think both these teams can, you know, can look forward to Salina going to 2-2 two and two now, 2-1 one, two and one in the WBL, so they're right in the hunt with a lot of other teams. So. We'll see what happens with the rest of the season for these two. Absolutely. Again, Salina moves to two and two. Kenton falls to one and three. Another thank you to our sponsors tonight, Wabash Mutual Telephone, Home Savings and Loan of Kenton, and Kenton Moose. And as always, a thank you to you, the viewer, for tuning into High School Football on WOSN. For Dar Nevergall, I've been Evan Skilleter signing off. Have a great night. God bless.